What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Renegade's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at Unique Toys Salmore, which is a Renegade leader Psykill from GoBots. Let me get this out of the way. This is a good toy. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it's good. It's far from terrible. It's far from bad. It's good. It's not without its problems. We're going to talk about those and. We're going to talk about how it kind of fits in your collection, and I'm going to come through with some confessions about this figure personally, and I'm going to hopefully maintain a friendship, but we'll get into that. So, first impressions right out of the box was it was a little lighter than I expected. Now, I haven't got any unique toys since the uh, Sharktacons, and I've heard they've been making all these improvements, and I, um, I think this is an improvement from the Sharktacons, I will say that you know, easily, but... I was expecting maybe the plastic to be a little bit more along the MMC, Fans Project, Make Toys, Fans Toys kind of level, and it, it's it's not. It's it's more so on the Hasbro level. Um, it's good. It's far from bad. It's 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 solid, but it's it's not that like yeah, like I could throw this against the wall plastic, you know. So that was a, a bit of a disappointment. But what took me it was just the paint on this thing. It's it's not that there's a lot of different paint choices, but there's a lot of paint attention to this figure and it's always nice because it adds so much you know and of course you can get the repro label set and I get that and you know that's good I love repro labels but I can't express how much a lot of color on a figure with those little accents and those little details adds to the overall experience so so that was really cool I like to start with the accessories you get these two things uh, which are kinda dumb looking as far as weapons are but they work well for the transformation and all that and they collapse here. Um, this one's like a little, they're both, that one's actually a better, but this, this one's a little loose here, which is good for the chrome, but like if you wanted to have it like in an up position, you'd have to really pull it and kind of stick it otherwise. You know, you might, you know, you might lose it. And then the handles fold down for transformation. So we'll set this aside. And the same thing with the handle. This one's a little loose. That was nice and stiff, but this is the stiff right one. <laughs> it's not one perfect one, but anyway. Uh, and then he has these shoulder mounts here. They're like shoulder I don't know, armor or shields or whatever. And we'll talk about those for a second. That puppy is in there. Good grief. So they come with this like this outer plastic shell. You can take it off. Uh, you need to for transformation. And uh, this is a transparent plastic, but it feels pretty sturdy. And the spikes are, are um, you can hurt somebody. The nice thing about these wheels, there's a nice chrome accents on them. Uh, of course, they rotate, and there's like a rubbery, you know, soft plastic that they use for the, the actual tread of the tire. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of stuff like that. You know, I'm a sucker for that. Same on this side, and we'll just take the outer shell off. And this one is the same thing, where the, the, sh the shell... Sticks onto this one a little bit. The tolerance is just a little bit off for this one as opposed to the other one. I'm guessing it has something to do with the chrome. Okay. Articulation-wise, the head is on a ball joint, but you don't get much out of it aside from a swivel because of the molding of the head, the design of the head, and the, and the chest there. So that's just, you know, that's just the cost of doing business, I'm afraid. And uh, the head is painted beautifully. Really nice, really nice attention to detail. I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, s shoulders are on a hinged swivel, so you get a lot there. Double jointed elbows, so you get full rotation there. Bicep swivel, and the wrist is it's on a ball joint, but you only get the swivel out of it, but what more do you really need? So that's all good there. And we have little yellow accents there. You got some gray paint, gray paint, silver paint. You know, what's not to like? Same on the other side. The problem with the shoulders that I would have liked is something to peg in between the base of the shoulder here and where it hinges. Um, but you can kind of get them like, what? Like, you know, you want a problem, boss? But, so, there you go. Due to the transformation, you'll see it. It seems like he might have had an ab crunch, but he doesn't. I got really excited for a minute and then realized that wasn't the case. But it's still nice. And we got this... Uh, Clear piece of transparent plastic here, which I guess is a light piping thing. It works all right. Um, but, you know, whatever. Nice accent. Doesn't hurt anything. Why not? Waist swivel works fine. 
Another one of my complaints aside from the shoulders is the hips. Out and in, it's on a universal joint, back and forth, but it's a little, it's a little loose. And this is a hundred dollar figure. You add in shipping, it's hundred and ten dollars. It would have been nice to get universal ratcheting joints there, and I think that would have made the world a difference. Thigh swivel, knee gets you way past ninety degrees, and then we got an ankle tilt that's on a ball joint. Yeah, it's on a ball joint on both feet, and. That's that. And it's really cool. And I think he actually, he even looks cool and kind of, you know, reminiscent of that, that GoBot look, you know, from his original incantation. I don't know if they call that G1 or not. I'm not really a GoBot guy. But I got to tell you, I got to have a little confession here. I had a deal with my buddy Greg from Mercy. And the deal was, he wanted this, he really wanted this, and I really wanted the iGear Raptors. And we were going to be strong for each other. I was going to not let him get this, and he was going to not let me get the iGear Raptors. Well, then he said he wanted to get the iGear Raptors. And I kind of was like, hey, man, you know, I thought we were being strong for each other. And he was like, well, no, we can get the opposite toys. We just can't get the, the ones that we want, the ones that we're suckers for. And I said, oh, okay, I get it. Well, then he decided he didn't want the iGear Raptors. And then I decided I wanted this guy when I saw Crasher. So I haven't told him yet. And I'm thinking about letting you guys in on that conversation. So let's do that. Okay, ready? Mercy, what's up, dude? Oh, nothing, man. Get ready to go get some, uh, some lunch, man. What you got? Hey, I, I got to make a quick confession. Okay. I, uh, I ended up getting that uh, Unique Toys Salmore. You what? The Salmore? The, the Psycho. I, I ended up getting him. I thought we had an agreement. Y yeah, but I... I I wouldn't get Raptors. You wouldn't get robots, right? Right. Right. That how it went. That's that, right. And, and, and so you got robots. Right. It, does, does that mean nothing to you? Do, do I mean nothing to you? <laughs> no, it's not like that. It's not like that. I'm gonna get every one of those guys Raptors. I have them at the welcoming party. The rainmakers. I'm getting every single one of them. <laughs> the I'm bringing the TF cons. You don't get to touch him. I'm going to let the boss rub his f***ing Dinobots all over him. <laughs> Flash is going to be riding the f***ing Starscream. You can't do about it. How's that feel, my f***ing? <laughs> Come on, now. It's, it's... <laughs> all right. Well, we're we're going to get past this. You don't, don't you worry about this. We're going to get past this. Our friendship shall survive. Let's get this guy transformed. Um, there are some tolerance issues, but there's a lot of amazing engineering, uh, I must say. One thing I will tell you is that the directions are terrible. It's like they were shot in a cave somewhere. It's hard to tell what's going on in them. So, we got to clear out the back. Because these parts hide in there, although it's hollow, it doesn't feel hollow, which is nice. Open this as far as it'll go, tuck the head in, no big deal, right? This is the part that can eat you up, though. Put pressure on the hands. They're on ball joints there. Turn the hand around. Tuck it back in. No big deal. Same on the other side. And then this is where things can get a little hairy. So, I have a piece of flash on mine. Be mindful of yours right there. Because the tolerance is really tight here. What you got to do, bring the shoulder around like this with the hinge here a little bit out on the shoulder out swivel up and I can tell you I made that look easy but sometimes it can be um, it can be a real pain so same on the other side and I made it look easy but it can be a real pain and the more you do it the more it will start loosening up too so collapse that kind of in make it compact this is why I thought there was an ab crunch. You turn it halfway and tuck it back down on itself. So I was like, huh, i got to check the ab crunch when I get them back, but it doesn't work when you're in robot form. Okay, this is hard to explain, okay? <laughs> I'm going to try to do it the best I can. It's a series of swivels. So you swivel the leg out. Get this leg out of the way for now. Swivel the leg out. 
the the bars that connect to the wheel well connect here at the knee so it keeps the whole bot really firm and solid in robot form which is nice I like to get this bit done right away so the goal here is to you gotta get these handlebars out and they're on ball joints and they will pop off the tolerance is a little let's see it's a little off All right, pop that on. And then, sorry if the lighting's not showing up great there. Fix the handlebars, put the light down. That's a headlight. And for me, that just gives you a point of reference as, as to how that piece is supposed to look. Now, the goal is to get these tabs here into these ports there. So, swivel and I just knock the handlebar off and just take some finagling. There you go. I made that look easy. All right. Pull the wheel well cover, the wheel cover down. And that's that. Okay. So, you got half of it. Now, what they did for the back half is really kind of brilliant. First things first, get this piece out of the way here. Uh, the pelvis has a part that it opens up. And that's actually really cool. So it's the same thing, right? You can see that this is the seat of the bike. These will obviously hold the, uh, the tire. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get it so this, uh, you can't see it right now, hold on. We're trying to get it so that the seat sits up on the back of the bike, right? There's a piece here that flips down, and for no other reason but aesthetics, which is pretty awesome. All right, so swivel down like that, collapse that down so you have the clearance there so you can collapse that down. And voila. And that is really, really pretty cool. Let's get our... Uh, wheels locked in and they connect just like the original cycle if you had that good grief it's eating me up right now though isn't it You got a kickstand here, and you got a motorbike. Now the one last thing you can do, take your weapons, deploy, plug into the back of the bike, and into there. And it all fits extremely nice. Same on the other side. There you go. And that's a pretty sweet, clean look. Not for nothing. So the question, of course, on everyone's mind is who can I put on it? Well, how about X-23? How about the Mech Ideas demolition crew? Last but not least, how about Raphael? The truth is you can pretty much put about any figure that's between the 5 to 7 inch scale that has ball jointed or ball hinged hips. Okay, so let's talk about the bike. It rolls like a champ. 
it does not turn. The chrome looks possibly amazing uh, in bike mode, and I don't use that term very often. The transformation to get from bot to bike is a little bit complicated, but just complicated enough to make it feel rewarding, and that's really the nice thing. Not a whole lot to do with these when it's in bike mode, but I'm okay with it. Yes, the wheels parts for them, but it's minimal. I'm okay with it. Everything is really well thought out. That piece that I was telling you about, purely for aesthetics, is... Take these out. It's right there. Now, anybody could have not had this piece connect and just left that gap open. You know, and it was just, it would have been a, a minor eyesore, but they took it into consideration. And that's, that's top notch. Do you know what I mean? Like that's what it's all about. The devil's in the details, right? Pretty cool. Not a lot of complaints with the bike mode. I'll get them back into bot mode. We'll do a couple size comparisons, do some final thoughts, and get out of here. One thing that is worth mentioning when you're transforming back from bike to bot is that. Because of the tolerance things here, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get these, these shoulders out, right? So, there's really only one way to do it. Separate them, pull them down as far as they'll go, pull them out, open up. And you'll have no problem. But if you do it any other way, you won't be able to get it. Okay, size comparisons wise, I brought a couple figures to hope, hopefully get you an idea. So he's a decent size. You can see him in Prowl or, you know, there's not much difference between the two of them. So he's not going to square off with Optimus, but it'll look good squaring off against one of your Masterpiece cars. Definitely decent. And I just realized I actually had him mistransformed for, for a bit there during the size comparisons, but whatever. He's fixed now. Final thoughts. The plastic's cool. The transformation is awesome. It's intricate. It's fun. It's challenging and it's rewarding. It's a good time. The accessories are good. They're a little goofy in robot mode, but they're pretty awesome in bike mode. He's 110 bucks shipped usually, you know. He's about 100 bucks and then you pay for shipping, right? It's an awful lot for this figure. I, I think the 100 would have been completely justified if they'd have thrown in ratchets a couple of places to tighten up those joints. They're not the tightest joints in the world. They're not loose by any stretch of the imagination, but it does seem like they could get loose with time, especially the hips, which are staying together nicely right now, but you can see there's a little you know, it's a little give there, and I would have, I think if there was ratchets in those hips, I could forgive almost everything else. That's my big problem with this unit. But let's get down to the down and dirty. The truth is, is that the question about this guy in your collection doesn't come down to the big GoBots fans. They've already pre-ordered it. They're in. It doesn't come down to the Transformer fans who hate GoBots. They're already out. They've already decided. The question comes down to people like me that are on the fence and are trying to make a decision as to whether or not this line of GoBots would mix in, blend in well with their Transformer collection. Is it worth it? And I gotta be honest with you, I can't answer that. I feel okay with my purchase. I don't feel like I got a steal, and I don't feel like I got taken to the cleaners. I feel okay with my purchase. It could have been better, but it's pretty good. There's a lot of detail, there's a lot of intricacy, there's a lot of attention to this piece. So, if you are on the fence about it, think about this. There's an awful lot of engineering here, one. The size is decent, two. They're doing the rest of them, three. This will theoretically pay off for your collection and that's all i can tell you i'm working on a dark cybertron review i hope to have that up by friday thanks for listening thanks for watching till next time take care